Well, Navy SEAL Team 6 became a household name after members of that elite unit took out Osama bin Laden in May of 2011. But the same unit suffered tragedy just three months later when a helicopter carrying 30 American troops, most of them members of SEAL Team 6, was blasted out of the sky by Taliban forces in Afghanistan. Among the, American, the Americans killed, Sergeant Patrick Hamburger of the Nebraska National Guard and Navy SEALs Michael Strange and Aaron Vaughn. Their families say now their deaths did not have to happen. In an emotional news conference at the National Press Club in Washington yesterday, they blamed the Obama administration for what they call serious missteps leading to their son's deaths, and they are pushing for a congressional investigation. The U.S. government and many high-ranking military people own more credit for the shootdown than the Taliban. Political correctness, building the esteem of the Afghans, leveling of the playing field, and failure by the Obama administration to name the enemy and to accurately identify the savage ideology our warriors are up against has made an otherwise primitive foe formidable. Why was there no pre-assault fire? We were told as families that because pre-assault fire damages our efforts to win the hearts and minds of our enemy. So in other words, the hearts and minds of our enemy are more valuable to this government than my son's blood. We go to Dover to see the bodies and uh, we're all in the hangar down there and uh, President Obama comes up to me and he says, Mr. Strange, he grabs me by the shoulders, Michael changed the way America lives. I grabbed Mr. President by the shoulders and I said, I don't need to know about my son. I need to know what happened. Wow. Joining me now, Karen and Billy Vaughn, parents of Aaron Vaughn. Karen and Billy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the service of your son and your family to our nation and for the extraordinary sacrifice you've all made. Uh, let me start with you on this, Karen. Why do you believe this was anything other than a tragic accident? Megan, Thank you first for allowing us to come on and tell our story. As we uncovered documentation that we were given actually by the military um, from the investigation, from the full investigation of the crash, the more we read through the documentation, the more we realized there were serious issues in front of us. Um, we found out, first of all, that the men were flying on a CH-47D that was built in the 1960s. They were not flying on aviation that's proper equipment. The aviation they train with, the um, MH-47s that they train with here in the United States with the 160th Special, special Aviators. Uh, we found that they flew into the Tangy River Valley unescorted. This was not standard protocol. According to military testimo testimony, in over 400 missions, two commanders said they had never done an operation like this. Another thing that we learned is nobody could explain the importance of the mission. Why, when you, when you send up a quick reactionary force, is, is what the SEALs' reaction was called that night when they flew in, that should only be done when they're under very grave, serious circumstances because, according to military testimony, when a battle is underway, as was that night, three and a half hours of it, the entire valley was in a heightened state of alert, which means it's very dangerous to bring another crew in by chopper. That's the most vulnerable position warriors will ever find themselves in, is in a helicopter. And so, and then we give them an antiquated helicopter to, to fly in, unescorted with no pre-assault fire. And, That's just a few of the... And so do you believe then and, uh, that, this, that this was just an incompetence by our, by our military, by our government, or that this was something worse than incompetence. Let me start. Let me ask you that, Billy. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, at at this time, uh, our our military's uh, slogan, or uh, in the in the documents, is called "Relentless Pursuit of the Enemy." And I'll tell you, I don't know where it came from, but it makes about as much sense in what it's referring to as the Affordable Health Care Act. Karen told you there was no pre-assault fire. We had air weapons teams overhead. Uh, they weren't allowed to fire. They sat there and watched uh, their, their American brothers uh, be slain even after they were shot down. Beca uh, knowing where the shots came from, the RPGs were fired from. They did not fire back uh, here again because of the rules in of engagement. And let me just say, 
I know that there will be military, military people who will come forward and tell you that the CH-47 is just fine. You need to look at the information we have. And we've talked to many retired generals who have said the CH-47 is a good airframe for what it was designed to do. It is not designed to go in in the middle of the dark as an assault uh, machine. And that's what they use. Well, let me it for ask you this. Night. Let me let me ask you this. And I know you you two have been forced to get intimately familiar with these terms and and you know these protocols. But forgive me because I am not as familiar as you are. But I'm trying to understand whether you are alleging that that there was incompetence. They used the wrong helicopter. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't handled well. Or whether you think this is something greater, some sort of. Because I know you said yesterday at the press conference you feel they put a target on your son's back. Yeah. Um, so help us understand where you're going with these allegations. Let me let me answer the target on the back part. Um, as soon as uh, Joe Biden announced that it was a SEAL team who took out bin Laden, within 24 hours, my son called me and I rarely heard him ever sound afraid in his in his adult life. Uh, and he said, Mom, his tone was extraordinarily serious. He said, you need to wipe your social media clean. I mean, you need to get everything off of it now. And I said, of course, son, I will. What's wrong? And he said, Mom, there's chatter, and your life is in danger. Our lives are in danger, so clean it up right now. The, the community was very unnerved by that unveiling. So, yes, a target got put on their back, and it got put on the backs of every, every group that would work with SEAL Team 6 from that point forward. They actually confirmed Karzai's immediate remarks that it was SEAL Team 6, which raises a lot of questions. You, act, you asked about suspicions. There are a lot of questions we have answered, we have unanswered. And we don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but there are some staggering things that we've learned, such as the seven Afghanis that were on the manif manifest that night were not the Afghanis that died. In other words, we found out they were switched out at the very last minute in such a rush that the manifest couldn't be changed, which is very, very uh, dangerous and very uncommon. And so you, um, you, you have a suspicion that perhaps there was some manipulation to get this particular helicopter because it was so mm. heavily loaded with SEAL Team 6 members mm. who the, our own president acknowledged I were do. behind the bin Laden raid. Megan, at, at this time, we're still learning a lot of things. And, and we actually learned some more information about what Karen just told you there yesterday, uh, about that. Yesterday afternoon, after the press conference, somebody came forward. Uh, what, I, what I would like to say about, yes, it's incompetence on the, on the part of Vice President Joe Biden. And I'll tell you what, the media has let this man get away with saying, Uncle Joe's gaffes, Uncle Joe's gaffes. This is not Uncle Joe, and he's not some senile old grandfather. He is the second in command of the most powerful country in the world. And he needs to take responsibility for the comments he makes and quit being given a pass. And I'll, I'd like to say something else. We don't want to tear down the military. Our military men and women are risking. They volunteer to go off and fight. And, and we want to save the military. We want to save what's going on. The rules of engagement are leading to the unnecessary losses of our warriors. And, and, and we, want, we want to call on the American people because government is not correcting this. We've been working on this ever since our son died. And government is doing nothing. They, they sympathize with the enemy. They sympathize with the ideology. We need American men and women. We need mothers and fathers to come forward who may even have similar circumstances like this where they've lost warriors. We, we the Understood. Americans, citizens, are the ones who can change this. Understood. And there is one thing that I would like. I, I've, uh, I've, I've got to go, go but so, okay, uh, but, I, but I, I thank you both so much. I'm sorry to cut you off. I did want to just tell the audience quickly, the Pentagon says that they share in the grief of all the families who lost their loved ones. This is a tragic loss during a difficult mm -hmm. campaign, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll post their full statement on our website. Karen, Billy, all the best to you. Megan, thank, thank you, you for thank what you, you do. Thank you very much, Megan. Thank you. God bless your son.